for our next news special report. And now we're tearing into a scandal that's rocking the foundations of our justice system. It's a story of betrayal, misconduct, and blatant disregard for ethical boundaries. In the eye of the storm is Fulton County District Attorney Fanny Willis, whose actions have sparked outrage and disbelief. This isn't a mere courtroom controversy. It's a glaring example of how power can be misused and trust shattered. Willis, embroiled in allegations of an inappropriate relationship with a special prosecutor, has crossed a line that threatens to undermine the very principles of justice and integrity that we hold dear. As we uncover the layers of the scandal, the picture becomes disturbingly clear. This is a tale of hypocrisy, a breach of public trust, and a stark reminder of the perils of unchecked power. So stay with us as we expose the truth behind Willis' actions, a narrative that every American needs to hear. And believe me, you don't want to miss the final thought that ties it all together. Now, before we dive into our special report, a quick note, just like we rely on facts and integrity in news, our health demands the same attention in the midst of legal tangles and scandals like the one involving Fannie Willis, we seek clarity and truth. Similarly, when it comes to anti-aging, we all want something genuine, not just promises, and that's where our sponsor comes in with a special type of collagen. It's not a miracle cure, but it is the next best thing for a youthful complexion, much like seeing the truth brings clarity to complex stories. So don't miss out on this opportunity for 53% off and more at healthwithgary.com. Now, let's get back to the heart of our story. In a scandal that's shaken the pillars of our legal system, the Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis stands accused of not just professional misconduct, but a betrayal of the public trust. This isn't a simple lapse in judgment. It's a saga that exposes the troubling intertwining of personal relationships and legal responsibilities. Now, the controversy erupted when Willis made her first public remarks since the scandal broke at Big Bethel AME Church. Central to this scandal are the allegations of inappropriate relationship with Nathan Wade, a special prosecutor appointed by Willis to investigate former President Trump. Now, the relationship, if true, is a gross misconduct representing a conflict of interest that undermines the integrity of the entire investigation. Now, in her remarks, she attempted to justify her decisions. She defended her choice of hiring Wade, amongst others, emphasizing their diverse backgrounds. But diversity is not the question here. It's the ethics of her choices that are under scrutiny. When you appoint someone that you're allegedly involved with to a position of power and influence, you're not just making a questionable hiring decision, you're compromising the entire legal process. Watch. But dear God, are you listening? Mm. Why does Commissioner Thorne and so many others question my decision in a special counsel? Lord, your flawed, hard-headed, and imperfect child, I'm a little confused. I appointed three special counsel as is my right to do, paid them all the same hourly rate. They only attacked one. I hired one white woman, a good personal friend and great lawyer, a superstar, I tell you. I hired one white man, brilliant, my friend, and a great lawyer, and I hired one black man, another superstar, a great friend, and a great lawyer. Oh Lord, they gonna be mad when I call them out on this nonsense. First thing they say, oh she gonna play the race card now. But no God, isn't it them who's playing the race card when they only question one? Isn't it them playing the race card when they constantly think, I need someone from some other jurisdiction in some other state to tell me how to do a job I've been doing almost 30 years. <laughs> God, why don't they? But she didn't stop there. She went on to insinuate that the backlash against Wade was racially motivated, as a deflection that not only sidesteps the core issue, but also irresponsibly plays into racial tensions. It's a tactic that shifts focus from her alleged misconduct to a debate on race, a move that seems more about self-preservation than seeking justice. Here's more. Wasn't it them that attacked this lawyer of impeccable credentials? The black man I chose has been a judge more than 10 years, run a private practice more than 20, represented businesses in civil litigation. I ain't done, y'all. Served as a prosecutor, a criminal defense lawyer, special assistant attorney general, 
won the Chief Justice Robert Benham Award from the State Bar of Georgia. You know, they ain't just giving this to black men. How come God, the same black man I hired, was acceptable when a Republican in another county hired him and paid him twice the rate? Oh, y'all ain't hear me. In another county, the elected official has the authority to pay him twice the rate. Why is the white male Republican's judgment good enough but the black female Democrats, not. Now please hear me. I'm not criticizing his judgment. The people of his county elected him to make that decision. In fact, let me put it on the record. He's someone I respect because he was always willing to hire diversity. He was just looking for quality. I don't care political party. They care about it. My only question is, why is it question me? Lord, now I want to be clear. All three of these special counselors are superstars. But I'm just asking God, is it that some will never see a black man as qualified, no matter his achievements? What more can one achieve? The other two have never been judges, but no one questions their credentials. I'm just saying. Furthermore, Willis comments about the expectations placed on black women in power while highlighting the important societal issue can't be used as a shield against legitimate scrutiny. Quote, you cannot expect black women to be perfect and save the world. That's what she stated. However, this isn't about demanding perfection. It's about demanding accountability and ethical conduct irrespective of race and gender. Here's more. All the glory I receive is his grace. Not a perfect me. We are at a time in history, people. Hear me on this. We are at a time in history when you can no longer sit back and just let other folks do it. You cannot expect black women to be perfect and save the world. The Lord is completing us. We are not perfect. We need your prayers. We need to be allowed to stumble. We need grace. With that kind of support, we will move mountains and do Jesus' will. Stumbling all the way. So his flawed, hard-headed, and imperfect child has a message for each of you today. Please find a way to do your extraordinary, God-given assignment and make this community and the world a better place for all of his people. See, it is never about who you are. It is always about the great I am and who he is. See, we are all flawed, sinners, unworthy, imperfect, damaged, but we are qualified upon his call. Find common ground with people of all different ideologies if you simply commit yourself to be obedient and steadfast in your efforts and his work. If you commit yourself, God will turn your hard-headed self into the extraordinary for his kingdom. Thank you. Now, the implications of this scandal stretch far beyond personal indiscretions. If Willis' actions are proven unethical, they could delegitimize the entire investigation into former President Trump. In such a scenario is not only a blow to the quest for truth and justice, but also a gift to those who view the legal proceedings as politically motivated. Now, this isn't just a scandal. It's a potential crisis of confidence in our entire legal system. The response from Georgia Republicans calling for a formal investigation of Willis' conduct underscores the gravity of the allegations. If true, it represents a flagrant abuse of power, eroding public faith in our legal institutions. It's not just a matter of legality. It's about the moral and ethical fabric that binds our society. And adding a further twist, the subpoena served to Willis as part of Wade's divorce proceeding paints a sore picture.
dragging personal failings right into the public domain. Now, this isn't just about legal ethics. It's about the personal integrity of those charged with upholding the law. In dissecting the scandal, we must confront uncomfortable truths about our justice system. This isn't just about Willis. It's about a system where such breaches of trust can occur. It's a wake-up call to the inherent flaws in our legal framework and the urgent need for systemic reforms. Moreover, the scandal focuses us, foc forces us to grapple with an intertwining of race and gender and power in our political and legal discourse. While these are critical issues that deserve attention, they should not be used as a smokescreen to deflect from ethical lapses. Willis' attempt to intertwine these complex societal issues with her personal conduct is not just disingenuous, it's a disservice to the very causes she claims to represent. Now, this narrative goes beyond Willis and Wade as a story about how those in positions of power entrusted with immense responsibility of upholding the law can succumb to the very temptations they're supposed to guard against. It's a story that erodes public trust in our institutions, casting a shadow over the principles of justice and impartiality. As this saga continues to unfold, it's crucial for us to remember what is at stake. This is more than a political scandal. It's a test of our legal system's resilience and our society's commitment to ethical governance. The Willis scandal is not just a blemish on an individual's career. It's a symptom of a deeper issue within our legal and political system that demands our immediate attention. It's a reminder that our pursuit of justice is not just about following the letter of the law, but also about maintaining the spirit of ethics and integrity. In our republic, where the law is the bedrock of our society, any compromise on these principles is a compromise on the very foundations of our nation. In the end, the Willis scandal is a call to action for all of us. It's a call to hold our leaders accountable, to demand transparency and integrity, and to ensure that our legal system remains a true beacon of justice, untainted by personal interests or political agendas. As we watch the story unfold, let's not lose sight of the broader implications and the vital importance of upholding the highest standards of ethical conduct in public life. If you got value from this report, tap subscribe. My final thought is next. In tonight's report, we've seen more than just a scandal. We've witnessed a stark betrayal of public trust by Fannie Willis. Her actions, far from the standards expected from someone in her position, are a slap in the face to the principles of justice and integrity. This isn't just poor judgment. It's a flagrant disregard for the ethical boundaries that are, that are fundamental to our legal system. Her attempt to hide behind race and gender issues while deflecting from her own alleged misconduct is not only unacceptable, but deeply damaging. It undermines genuine efforts to address those serious societal issues. And her actions, if true, are a disservice to the very office that she holds and to the people that she's sworn to serve. This scandal goes beyond individual wrongdoing. It's a symptom of a deeper melee in our legal and political system. It's a wake-up call for all of us to demand better from those in power and to hold them accountable and to ensure that our legal system remains a beacon of fairness and justice. In our republic, the law must stand above personal interests, and those who breach this trust must face the full consequences. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. Now keep up your quest for truth with this next news report. And if you found our channel enlightening, join the millions who agree with you. Tap subscribe. Thank you for watching the Next News Network.